Hey guys, Dr. Larry here. Today I am here with Coco and Coco is here for some vaccinations. Um, one of the vaccines is the December Parvo vaccine. And, but that's not what the topic of the video is. The topic of the video today actually is what we call vaccine titers. So normally um, with most veterinarians uh, in the United States, we usually go ahead and follow the American Animal Hospital Association recommendations for vaccinations, which means that we typically will give two core vaccines, the stem for parvo vaccine and rabies vaccination on an annual basis. And then depending on what their exposure level is to other diseases such as leptospirosis, canine influenza, and or uh, Bordetella, those are some of the, what we consider non-core vaccines um, that we will sometimes go ahead and administer to our patients to help and protect them against uh, diseases. Now, I personally um, came up in veterinary medicine with a veterinarian who um, was not or, or is not uh, in favor of giving a lot of vaccinations. Um, the thought process behind giving a lot of vaccinations or against giving a lot of vaccinations is the fact that you're introducing something into the body um, that cause, purposely causes inflammation and therefore makes them more likely to potentially develop other conditions such as uh, there have some, been some, some correlations to immune-mediated immune hemolytic anemia um, to some of the vaccinations. Um, we have seen, I have seen some dogs who will develop um, hygromas. We have a video on that where a dog will develop like a swelling on their elbow, typically something seen in bigger dogs. Um, and, you know, of course, then there's that whole controversial topic of whether or not uh, vaccinations in humans cause um, autism or anything on that spectrum or any sort of side effects like that. And so, you know, I don't consider myself to be completely holistic, uh, nor do I consider myself to be, um, you know, very traditional. I'd like to say that I, I use a mix of both and call myself integrative. Or, uh, and so the vaccine titers, um, what, we will, what we typically run on our patients here, majority of the time and what I do on my own dogs, is a blood test that measures the immunity level for the dogs um, against parvovirus and also against uh, distemper virus. Now the test, the way the test works is we'll go ahead, we'll draw some blood, and then if the patients have their immune system has adequate immunity against the December virus and parvo virus, then the test will come back positive for both of the virus uh, immunity levels. Now positive in this particular case is actually a good thing. We do want the test to come back positive. Um, if the test comes back negative, um, then a lot of times what we will end up doing is um, I talk to the clients and I have a conversation about whether or not they have an actual increased level of exposure or risk with other dogs, um, going to dog parks and that kind of stuff. Um, remember that distemper virus is transmitted uh, through aerosol, kind of like COVID is. Um, and so the, I know, I know. Um, Alejandro, um, and I'm, we're gonna go ahead and get Coco off the table because as you can hear, um, the Coco wants to get off the table. And so, um, hi, oh, now, now you found my mouth and you're okay with that, okay. So, um, if the patients are not exposed, here you go, thank you Alejandro, you look so different. This is actually Valeria, if you guys remember her from other videos. Um, if they are not exposed to other dogs or don't come in contact with other dogs, or if they do what we now know as social distancing, I'm actually okay if the, the, that particular titer comes back low um, and we choose not to go ahead and vaccinate that particular dog against distemper virus. If the parvovirus titer comes back low, I actually recommend vaccinating for that unless you're keeping your dog in your house um, and not taking them for walks around the neighborhood or anything like that because parvovirus is transmitted in the feces, i.e. the poop, and when those dogs have a bowel movement or when they poop, it's very, very liquidy. And so you may not even know that there is residue of another dog's poop on the grass. 
And so then that's how your dog would potentially have that virus transmitted. Um, when, for you guys to be aware, when we vaccinate or booster for these diseases, we do booster them for distemper and parvovirus. The, we do not, we personally do not carry individual vaccines uh, for that. You can check with your veterinarian. Um, I try to give as little vaccines as possible. Uh, in, hum in human medicine, they have a lot of different vaccines which they give. In veterinary medicine, we only have two what we call core vaccines, distemper virus and parvo parvovirus in one vaccine, and then rabies is the other vaccine. Uh, hopefully this uh, video was helpful in terms of explaining what vaccine titers are, which diseases or vaccines we will go ahead and do the test for, and how to go ahead and interpret those results and some different options that you can go ahead and move forward depending on how the results come back and also what your personal pet's exposure level is to those potential risks of diseases and that kind of stuff. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, uh, hope you're staying safe. And if you know somebody who needs to watch this, please share it with them. Thanks for watching, take care and be safe.